Big guy! Hello, my friends. Welcome to another edition of Whining with the Ryback. Nice little pumpkin here for the holidays. Hello, Fall. Why, hello. I'll keep it in the shot. Hi. Hi, baby. What are you doing? We're going to go potty when I'm done, okay? Daddy's just recording one more segment for the night. Getting a little wine drunk. It's okay. I love you. Sophie's looking at me. She's... Come here. She's doing very good for everybody out there. She sits by me. She's very loyal. She's, uh, she, you need to go potty? Guys, we're going to take a quick break. I'm going to take my dog to go to the bathroom because I can tell when she has to go. And we're not going to make her wait. I'll be right back. A few moments later. Sorry about that. Had to go ahead and take her out. A little baby had to go. Neighbors probably think I'm a real creep walking around at night with my athletic pants on and my robe because... I just, I don't put my robe on because I have my robe downstairs to film this segment. So I probably look really stupid. Oh well. Tonight's wine, guys. 19 crimes. Dell's my boy messaging me here. 19 crimes, each declared by his majesty to be punishable by conviction, by Transport, transportation. I was going to read something else right there. Kind of looks like a young, young Jim Carrey a little bit, huh? This is a 2017 red wine. Uh, this is a very cheap red wine. I think what I'm going to do next is uh, Gary Vaynerchuk's empathy wine. Because I have nothing but empathy for these people that reach out with hate. And just in a very, very mean and negative, just desperate attempt to try to hurt the big guy's feelings. Guys, I have to let you know. It doesn't hurt my feelings. You can tell me anything you want to tell me. I've heard it all. I've heard it all. And I'm still here and I'm bigger, badder, stronger, faster than ever. More positive than ever. I love you, my friends. And the people that think I am your enemy, I'm not can't we all just get along? <laughs> Apparently not. <sighs> Hop on the old tablet here. Okay, it's... This was working just fine moments ago. Mm, allow access to my videos, yes. There we go. I got the sleeves rolled up tonight because not because I'm trying to show off my massive forearms as my hulking 300 pound body is coming back. The life, the life is being instilled back inside of the big guy. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. I'm very grateful. But um, it's hot as hell. I have my air conditioning on. And uh, even though it's October here in Vegas, it's not hot outside. But this robe is very, very hot. And I'm going to buy some more. I just feel like... It's like my, my, my wrestling attire. I can't wear the same thing for over a month. And I feel like it's been over a month for winding with the Ryback. Probably going to go with a nice red. Red or gray. Next, guys. Leave it in the comments below what color robe... What color robes you would like to see me have. There's no color I won't wear, guys. It is October. Maybe I'll get a pink one for Susan G. Komen. All right, let's get started. I have a very hateful one to start off. Very hateful. Kids of jokes. He left this recently, 12 hours ago. Or it's probably been about 15 from, from now. This is in relation to uh, my new Feed Me More Fitness Rebuilding Ryback video. Um, kids of jokes kids of jokes just for my my viewers watching 
fluff training, if you trained sensibly, your body wouldn't be in such a state. Kids of jokes. Um, the word fluff training typically means, and I actually, I'm just going to read the response. I actually responded to this one personally. And guys, for you guys watching, full transparency, I like a lot of the comments on the videos. I would say a good portion of them, between 50 and 60% are from me. I also do have people that work for me and uh, part of the, the Ryback team, the Feed Me More team, and, and they have specific instructions on things. I'm very interactive with this, and this is all from Gary. Gary's helped me tremendously with this, and I try to be very interactive with you guys. So I responded to this one. Incorrect. It was being given Toradol and cortisone to wrestle four to five nights a week for the last two years when an MRI on the back and shoulder, along with stopping a couple of moves, would have avoided the situation. Fluff training, I don't have the full, I'm gonna have to now wing this because it's a screenshot of just that part of it. Fluff training typically is very lightweight, high volume, more endurance training to get more of a pump. Get a pump, brother. Get a pump. Um, so fluff training by most accounts is actually, and again, it's all in, in the context of the individual, but fluff training in, in, is typically safer uh, in the way, and again, uh, heavy training can be very safe when done properly, and, and I've, I've learned that in, in, in the, from a neurological standpoint and the benefits of training heavy, and when done properly, can enhance your life greatly, done properly. Light training done properly is very safe and effective. High endurance training is very safe and effective. Um, so kids of jokes to say fluff training is why I, and, and if I had trained sensibly, I wouldn't be in such a state. I just want you to understand why, and I've spoken about this. It, I gave everything I had to be my very best night in and night out. Fluff. Sorry, kid, kids and jokes now, fluff, sorry. <laughs> and whether it was a live event or a TV, WrestleMania, pay-per-view, I gave, I gave it everything I got because I love what I do and I care about myself and I have so much pride in what I do. And I understand that no matter if a person or a family is paying for a WWE live event or paying for the, for the, for the WrestleMania, the grandest, uh, the, the, the biggest show of them all, I am giving those people everything I have because I want them to have a good impression and I want them to come back. And I want, I want them to have a lasting memory that I had when I was a kid. And that's the honest to God's truth. So while I was there and I was hurting and waking up every day and having to take long hot showers to get my body to loosen up and from all this stuff and it was doing power moves, which is the most real thing in pro wrestling on top of all the, the travel that everyone does, in the long weight training sessions to maintain my body without drugs and steroids, which is something that I don't expect anyone to understand how much heart and dedication that takes. But it takes an incredible amount of effort. And to give it my all each and every night and not to be in pain, and there were some nights I did wrestle in pain and it, it, it were greatly impacted me and hurt me and I, and I wanted to be able to give everybody everything I had because I didn't want them to think like, Ah, that's not what I saw on TV. So I let them give me the Toradol and the cortisone throughout the year, which was what ended up causing the majority of my problems. Now, my back was from the backpack stunner. The Toradol, though, covered up the pain while I was on the road all week. So I didn't think I was hurt. So I could keep doing everything I was doing. Whereas if I just, and, and they were fully aware of everything, had I went, and again, I got to take the blame too. I take the blame too. But in Hunter, you've heard all the wrestlers don't look out for themselves. And I'm very competitive and I give it everything I got. But I have to take the blame on, on that too. But the cortisone for the shoulder, 
I was told two to three times a year would have no negative repercussions on my long-term health. That was not the case. It ate away all my cartilage. And so that is what I am dealing with, uh, kids of jokes. It's not the training. I do, I'm very proud of the way I train. I do a lot of core. I do a lot of things to strengthen my body. I do a lot of high conditioning, high intensity conditioning. And unless you closely follow me, you, you wouldn't know that. But kids of jokes, be better than that, buddy. There's no need to insult somebody and say the word fluff training. And that if you train sensibly, your body wouldn't be in such a state. I hope you find the peace that you want and the happiness that you want. Because this is apparent, it's very apparent in your message that you don't have it. And I wish you nothing but the best, my friend. Moving on. Uh, let's see here. Get to the good stuff. Get to the good stuff. Sinister8185 commented, and I don't know what videos these are all in relation to, guys. But he says, yeah, we don't like you either. And that's okay. We don't have to like everybody, guys. We also don't have to leave the comment to try to hurt somebody. So just think about that. I see things all the time that don't resonate with me. And I don't think for a second, you know what? I want to stop everything I'm doing and I want to spend more time out of my day to let that person know that I don't like them. Because that would reflect on my mindset. And then also that would reflect on me trying to, spend, to spread more negativity and hate. There's just no place for it, guys. You don't have to do it. Free speech, yeah. But buddy, your mindset says everything about you and what's going on in your life. Happy people, loving people don't need to do that. We all make mistakes, though. It could have just been a mistake. Ricardo Valadez. Ricardo Valadez. And I don't know the video. Ah. You are great, bro, but this time I got to say no good on the video. Feed me less with a little laughing thing. So that could have been a joke. And that wasn't, I'm not, there's no, I don't, I don't have the context of the, of the video or anything. So I can't really respond to that. I'm, I'm sorry, Ricardo, but thank you for, for commenting. And it seems it wasn't, that's not bad at all. All right. We got to bump these up here. Looking for the comments. Sorry, guys. Here we go. Here all. Here they are. Uh, <laughs> Trekking guy, seventeen oh one. This guy could get his head chopped off, and his head would keep on yapping for thirty minutes before it died. <laughs> that's 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 pretty damn good. Very good trucking guy. Real chatty Kathy. There's a lot I wanted. I read so many damn books and listen to so many audiobooks. There's so much information I want to get out there. And I'm going to continue to get out there. <laughs> uh, and just so, and again, full transparency. Everything I'm doing on here, guys, the challenges, the, the food videos, this. It's for you to get to know me. It's for you to hear me, and you're not going to agree with everything I say. But it's for you to know the real me. Full transparency in everything that I do. Because I'm not happy with people hating me for parts that I played on TV and gave all my best to just to try to play a part. And, and for people to form opinions on parts, whether it was good or bad, is not satisfying to me. What is satisfying is that you know me for the real me. And love me or hate me. It's okay. But at least it's me being me. And I can live with that. But it fucking really bothers me. And I cussed. I'm trying not to cuss in these videos. Stupid. If I'm being myself, I could live with it. It doesn't bother me. It bothers me, though, when I'm not. When I'm acting and there are people that buy into it. It just disappoints me. And I just want us all to be better than that. So... 
these videos are only just an outlet of the challenges and everything for me to have fun, for you to get to know me. That's it. I'm just living my life on, on screen for you guys. Like I was before, but I'm not working for anyone else. I'm just doing it here. That's all that YouTube is. There's no difference. It's whether a, a network is just making money off of people, getting you to know whatever they want you to know about them. I can let you know the real me working for me. So no difference really. Just it's it's just it's slight alterations on it. John John Lukacs. These cheat meals seem to be more than once per week. No, they've been they've been the cheat meals, John. And early on, I did a couple a week there for the first few weeks. And it was, but you got to take, again, in, in the context of the situation, John, I need 4,500 to 5,000 calories per day to maintain my weight at my current activity level. So me having one of those cheat meals actually fits into my calories where I'm not like going overboard. Now the Papa John's pizza was a very high calorie cheat meal where I went over my calories for the day. That was probably the only one of all the cheat things that I've done that put me over my calories for the day. Trying to think in, in off the top of my head, I may no, maybe the day of the 50 chicken nuggets as well. Maybe, but I know I altered my, my food intake that day. So, but I'm very conscious of that. And I'm actually right now in, in everything with my, I'm trying to put on as much weight and, and strength right now as possible with this and keep my body fat in check, which I'm doing through the cardio. And my diet is, again, I'm going to, and we got, and I got the videographer for the Feed Me More Fitness stuff. We're going to be documenting a lot more stuff, guys. We're going to be doing a day in the day of me going around, people recognizing me, the places I go, um, giving you guys more insight into my life. I wanted to do this three years ago. The injuries just put a halt to all that. I didn't want to document that stuff. It was hard enough living through all that and going just with everything and with the business and doing everything. So I'm opening the door now as this all goes on. But I'm very conscious of, of the cheat meals and what I'm doing. The subs and things like that, and I explained on that, fit into my diet. And, and you can go out and just because you're eating a Jersey Mike's, you know, consuming 14 inch, consuming a 14 inch sub, that's not... Again, the calories are, are configured into my daily amount, and it's. Uh, but I appreciate you caring about my health, and it's. And there's, I've noticed the comments, the people doing that. It's greatly appreciated, guys. My day off today, I went and did an hour of cardio and 15 sets of calves. So, my day off, I can't take. And then I walk the dogs for 30 minutes. So it's. I'm always. I'm very active. I get blood work regularly. I'm, my heart. I have. A, my, cal my coronary artery calcium score is zero, which is perfect. And, and thank you. I'm like very knock on. Well, there's wood down here. Knock on wood. So moving on. Uh, Big Drew TV. This guy's salty for getting fired on TV. First of all, sodium is very good for you, especially sodium with iodine. It's being salty is like, not a bad thing. Um, Big Drew TV. Getting fired on TV. So the only thing I could think of is that you're referring to the point when me, Dolph Ziggler, and Eric Rowan got fired on TV in WWE. It's part of a storyline in a fake scripted environment. Like straight up acting. Like told in the back earlier in the day that like, hey guys, this is what's going to happen. We're going to do this firing angle for two weeks and you're going to get two weeks off. No live events and like all of us were ecstatic because we got two weeks off. Like legit, I got two weeks paid off. I wasn't salty at all. It was all part of an angle and I was eventually brought back because it was all fake acting. You okay, Big Drew?
There's nothing worse than wrestling fans that like say stupid shit all off of like the acting part. Like I don't. Hi, Sophie. I'm... I'll be nice. I know it's whining with Rabbit. I'll be nice. True story, guys. Before I go to the next one, this is a very true story. My dad went to a WWE event with me when I was a kid. And I watched it, but I never really, um, I played sports and just, I loved it. I, I liked watching it. And my dad was not a wrestling fan. He's very proud of everything I've done. But we went to, a, to one of the events and my uncle went once also. My uncle went to a couple. But my dad was with me and we were walking up in the, like the, before we went down to the seats, and I uh, can't remember what the hell that's called, um, where the, like, the, the vendors are and all the food and the, and the merchandise. And I noticed all these people like walking around. And I said to my dad, <laughs> I go, dad, what's wrong with all these people? Because I was younger. And my dad goes, Ryan, they're fucking retarded. <laughs> And I need to, and he, and he said it, and I didn't know what he meant because I'm looking around and I did it by the definition of it. And I need to say in that word, and we live in a time where you're not allowed to say any words and you can say any word you want. And I'm a definition of them. I'm explaining it right now. Mentally handicapped people, retarded people, whatever the word is that people use, are the friendliest, happiest, most loving people in the world. And we should all strive to have the energy that those people have. And I've met, I've met many, many, many people like that. And they don't have a mean bone in their body. And uh, they're the most loving souls on the planet. So when I say that, I'm just speaking from the truth of what my dad said. And my dad did not mean it in the, in the fact that those people were that. That was just the best word at that time and that time period that, that fit what he was trying to portray to me. And I've talked about it. It was the, the, it was some of the diseased wrestling fans that is just a different breed and that's okay because there, but there's some negative mean ones and there's a lot of negative mean ones and whatnot, but it was uh, one of those moments. It was my shallow how moment of wrestling fans, the beginning of shallow how and the dad is explaining the, the the meaning of life to, to how and it's all messed up. And I knew what my dad meant as time went on. And he didn't mean it like that, but that was what he said. And it was fucking funny. <laughs> uh, I think I left that show with one of the fake, the Undertaker urn, the styrofoam urn. And I remember it was, I only had $20 on me. And, uh, and I'd saved up for quite a while. And I remember I bought this little shitty styrofoam urn. Undertaker, you owe me 20 fucking bucks, by the way, Ben. It was so pathetically. And it's not, Taker didn't make it. WWE did Vince. It was so cheap and pathetic. But it was, I paid 20 bucks for it. Stupid. Ah, uh, memories. Uh, Landon Smith. Sup, Goldberg. Who's next? It doesn't even bother me. Like, the Goldberg stuff? I don't even, like... The guy was the most over guy in wrestling. Arguably, during my period, I was the most over guy for a period of time. I don't understand. It's just... I like Goldberg. Goldberg's a good guy. I've met him. I'd love to have him on my podcast eventually. Eventually, I'm going to get him on. Try to get, try to get more WWE guys on. Maybe I'll reach out to, to a couple of the people I know over there. And uh, we'll get some more WWE interviews. But they got their whole WWE thing now, podcast thing and whatnot, which they're probably not paying the talent that well for, guys. 
So, but we'll try, we'll try. Lisa Fan, 40 minutes ago, steroids. Uh, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. I, I, the reason why I get so mad at that, guys, is because I would look so much better on steroids. <laughs> so I'm just like, fuck. You think this is like, I was like, God. I get it, though. It's a reflection of them. Don't get mad. Uh, Jacob Parent. Jacob Parent says, this is what happens when you get fired, huh? Eating chicken sandwiches. Why don't you tell them how you almost killed CM Punk twice? I don't recall being in CM Punk's two UFC fights. Was I? Jacob Parent, why don't you tell them how you almost killed CM Punk twice? I don't know what to tell you, Jacob. And all I can say is this, Jacob. And I'm just going to leave it at this. Being a pro wrestler, I would feel like the biggest pussy. I would feel like the biggest piece of trash POS if like I, I left WWE and then I later later then just like singled out somebody and said he hurt me oh he hurt me he was violent with me oh he hurt me bad what would you guys think about me let's just go ahead and put it on me Jacob if I came out and I said Man, that John Cena was rough with me. Damn it. John was so rough in the ring with me. He manhandled me. Oh. Did you guys see what John did to me? Did you guys, John F would me so violently. Oh. Oh. Just think about that. Like this cult hero, this so-called badass, comes out and one guy was just too rough for him. And then just knowing everything that we know now, Jacob, which is gonna come back to you, Jacob, because that guy's your hero, which is a reflection of you, brother. Think about it. How weird is that? Very odd, right? There were some personal things going on, too, which is why he went ahead and said that. It, it was done on an intention. Very smart guy. He got, he got his, he, he did what he wanted to do with that. But just think about that. Just like, God. Imagine Punk 2 and those UFC. Man, those guys really beat me up. Jeez, those guys were so violent in there. They punched me in the face repeatedly. I'll tell you this, Jacob. There are a lot of things with Punk, and I have no hate towards him, and I wish him the best and everything, and, and I'm so past all of all of the bullshit from wrestling and whatnot. But, uh, and, I, and I truly just want nothing. He seems like he's in a much better place now. But if you think it, it was that, that there was a lot of shit going on, buddy. And uh, some of those GTSs, he tried very hard to go ahead and lay those in, but I got news for you. I'm a fucking Neanderthal. Look at that forehead. You can hit that knee as hard as you want on my fucking forehead. You ain't gonna hurt me. I don't give a fuck who you are. And after he found that out, <laughs> there's a reason why he didn't bring anything up to my face. Because as funny as I am, as much as I love to laugh, as much as I love to show love and kindness and show humility and show you a softer side of me, that if I turn it on and I turn it on, there's no going back. And that's why I'm okay showing you every side of me, every side, because I have such confidence and believability and such, and I believe in myself, believability. I believe in myself so strongly 
I'm okay doing that. And Phil's looked at me in my eyes many times, and he knows. And I wish Phil nothing but the best. There was a lot of bullshit going on during all that. A lot. And I'm proud of everything that I did. <sighs> Moving on. El Diablo. <clears throat> There's only two types of people in the world, nice people and those who can act like them. A nice person wouldn't react like that. You just showed your true colors. Big guy! Sorry, Sophie. You made me scare my dog, asshole. I don't know what this is in reference to, but... There's more than two types of people in the world. That's so. You're wrong right off the bat on all that. And, like, we could plug in, like, a lot of different things on that. So. Nice people and those who act like them. I think you, if you met people that actually know me and have genuine relationships with me, you would know El Diablo that you're wrong. So, it's okay. Moving on. 1303, Crates HQ. If that's not roid rage, then you have no excuse you pathetic little cretin. The big guy, big guy, is just an angry little man at heart. Angry 300 pound man. I could be an angry 200 pound man, an angry 150 pound man. A very happy, loving 300 pound man. I just don't put up with bullshit. And I encourage all people not to put up with bullshit, but to try to act reasonably and, and from a point of view of understanding, but I, I, I've said this before on my podcast, Dr. Martin Luther King, and we've heard, there's a lot of things that go on. I've heard a lot of different things about him. But he always said, turn the other cheek. He was also shot dead. Fact, he was shot dead. Being nice is a real thing. But there comes a point where you have to be a man and defend yourself and not let people walk all over you. And you have to put out your truth. It's a thing. It's a very real thing. And uh, I firmly believe in that. So, I don't know what you're referencing and whatnot, but I give you what you give me, man. And, and I'm, I'm more than forgiving. And it's happened time and time again with people where they, they, they've acknowledged or said, you know, hey, I, I had it all wrong. Cool, no hard feelings and whatnot. But it's like, you can't come up and shoot my dog and then and not expect me to fucking, fucking kill you. It doesn't work that way. I don't work that way. I don't. So... Like I said, I'm a Neanderthal living in modern times. I try my best to be a good person, but you do something fucked up, you got to pay the piper. And that's the bottom line. Moving on. <laughs> Unicorn Thug commented, extraordinary. It would seem you are actually de-evolving. I have been studying and can pinpoint you to relate and pinpoint you to be related to the Mesozoic era. Interesting. Quite possible. I'm not even going to argue with you on that. But I would... De-evolving, that's kind of... I feel like I've... With the amount that I read, and I'm self-admittedly dumb as fuck, I just read so much that I've passed the threshold of, of what I was supposed to be. I'm an anomaly. I'm not... Like, I'm not normal. It's dangerous. Because I think I'm smart, but I'm dumb as fuck. It's so dangerous. Which means I'm capable of amazing things. So, but thank you for sharing that with me. That was actually the last message. We're long on this video. These, these, these whining videos are long. And with that, guys, I'm going to close out this week's video with a nice little message. Uh, um, a little thought, and I'm going to address it on the podcast as well with you guys. My good buddy, Rusev... Um, and I always admit when I'm wrong, or if I make a mistake, I um, 
I think that's part of growing up and uh, being a man or being a human being. And we're all human and, no, and there's nobody that goes through life that's perfect. And it was brought to my attention um, earlier earlier this evening, actually. Uh, my buddy Rusev messaged me and uh, it was something that was put on my Ryback TV from something that I said. Uh, and we, we had it taken down. I had it taken down immediately after um, hearing him out on the situation which was, I, I made a comment about the current storyline and everything going on, and and there's no excuses for it. I just think, I, I'd set it up where I'd said, and I love Rusev, where I thought in my mind, and us being friends, that that was um, softening what I was going to say. But, and I, and I, cause and I referenced the whole angle and everything going on and just said, he's fucking stupid for doing it. And I should have used a different word, different. I should have phrased it completely differently than that. And it was something I didn't even give a second thought about as far as, um, I knew when I said it, I thought by saying, I love Rusev that it would allow me to say my feelings on it, but and then I, and I explained it to him and we talked about it and I'm not going to share all that because that's between us. But I just want Rusev to understand that I, I'm truly apologetic because I value our friendship. And sometimes, and I think that was, for me, that was a big mistake on the show um, saying that. But I was, and I tried to explain it to him. I was speaking from anger for everything I went through. And I know he's going through a lot of that because he's one of the greatest guys in pro wrestling. And I just want him to have nothing but success. And he's going to, and he has, and he's had nothing but success. He's played every role ever asked of him to the best of his ability. So it was one of those things that I just let anger get the better of me. And I said, he's fucking stupid. But when I went back and listened to it after he brought it up to me and, and listened to it and then put myself in his shoes. And I think that's the important thing that I'm trying to, I, I was able not to look at it from what I was saying, but how would I feel if I was in his position going through that and doing that and just doing my job to the best of my ability and my friend said I was fucking stupid, regardless if he said he loves me before he said it and what he said after, but said I was fucking stupid for doing it because I'm not the one, it's not my angle, it's not It's not my life. So, and I, and I said, you know what? I would be fucking pissed off, I would be hurt. And so, and I understood that and I appreciated the fact that he was able to communicate that with me uh, rather than not just not talk to me. And uh, I think that says a lot about him. And I told him, I go, I apologized numerous times and I'm going to apologize on the podcast. And I, you know, apologize tonight and I'll probably apologize on, on multiple other things over the situation. But I think it's important um, as human beings just to, uh, that when we fuck up and mess up to own up to it. And that was, that was something I truly messed up on. And it wasn't, it was not done. It was not done on an on, on intention to try to, to hurt Rusev or to make money. And I did, I did lead to the video. We're not making any money on it. We're not getting any, whatever that money was going to be. We're not going to get it because I deleted the whole thing and, uh, it is what it is. So, and it's a learning experience and, you know, Rusev and me, I've known him for many years and I'm very proud of a lot of, of um, the relationship with, that we have and the, the matches that we were able to have uh, a lot, a lot of live events. And, and it, was, it was some very fond memories for me. And I always appreciated Rusev uh, because he went out and gave it his, his all like I did. And that was something that I, I truly respected about him. And Lana, and I apologize to Lana as well. Uh, being involved in all of that, Lana, I apologize to you as well uh, for that. And it's, I hope you guys know me better that, that I didn't truly mean you're, that you're fucking stupid because I don't think you are at all, neither of you. And it was just more of the anger inside of me for things that I allowed to happen and watching happen to my friend because I just, I just believe that you should be in a better position. And I think a lot of the fans believe that as well. And I hope the fans um, use their voice to cheer for you uh, and everything going on. That, um, and not that it always matters and we both know that and whatnot, but it's, uh, and I, when I say you're one of the real true good guys of pro wrestling, uh, I, I mean that from the heart, so. 
I'm sorry, my buddy. And uh, I fucked up. So I'm human. And it is what it is. So, But that's what uh, people make mistakes. And hopefully it's uh, not detrimental to our friendship. And if I have to send you some more free uh, Feed Me More Nutrition, I'm more than willing to do it, buddy, to, uh, to, to make amends. But I was fucking stupid for calling you fucking stupid. And with that, thank you guys for watching another episode of Winding with the Ryback. Hey guys, it's the big guy Ryback, and I just want to say thank you very much for watching. Go ahead and punch that like, smash that subscribe button, and check out my all-natural su my all-natural supplement line. Supplement, supplement. Stupid. My all-natural supplement line. Feed me more nutrition. Available on Amazon and feedmemore.com. And as always, conversation with the big guy Ryback available on all podcast platforms, iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and wherever podcasts are available. Never forget, feed me more. Thank you for tuning in to this segment of Ryback's Conversation with the Big Guy. Watch full episodes here on YouTube. Subscribe if you're new. Smash that like button if you had a great time watching. And for all supplements, check out feedmemore.com.